how to get better at solo step by step. In this video, I'll give you an all around routine that covers everything from mechanics to tournament knowledge. Couple things to mention before we get started. I'll be mentioning a few creative maps throughout this video and those codes will be in the description. Along with that, you can also find timestamps down below. And last thing, if you want to support me, if my videos have been helping you out, please consider using code JIVENTV in the Fortnite item shop, or at least make sure you're using somebody's code because it helps us out a ton. Now, without further ado, let's hop into this video. So the first part of your routine should be just warming up your aim and warming up your eyes. The best way to do this is hopping into an aim trainer, whether it be Kovacs, Aim Labs, or in-game creative aim trainers. I make sure to practice my aim every every single day. And if there's a day where I can't even hop on Fortnite, I'll still find time to hop on and warm up my aim. So what I recommend is hopping into your aim trainer for 30 to 60 minutes. I would say no more than 30 minutes if you only have a short amount of time to practice, like three hours or less. But if you have more time, feel free to spend more time in Kovacs. So down below in the description, I linked three Kovacs routines. One's for beginners, one's for intermediate, and one's for advanced. If you go into the advanced course, you may not be able to even hit the targets. If that describes you, I would recommend going to the intermediate or beginner ones. All three of these routines are very similar. They just have different sized targets and slightly different drills. So pick the one that suits you. If you use aim lab, I'm sorry, I don't have any routines for this video. I've never used aim labs before, but if you're using in-game creative practice routines, I really recommend using Raiders 1v1 aim trainer map. This map is player versus player, so you can try matchmaking into this map, but you might not be able to find a teammate. I recommend going into it with one of your friends or someone from a Discord community. But if you don't have anyone to play against, feel free to use his solo aim trainer, which he released about a month ago. That is linked in the description as well. The one other map listed down below is the headshot only Turtle Wars map. That's another good option to do after running everything else. I still recommend hopping into an actual aim trainer though. Okay, so that covers step one, 30 to 60 minutes of that. Next up, I recommend hopping into Raider's mechanical practice map for somewhere between 30 to 60 minutes. You can take away time or add time to this depending on where you're at mechanically. But for most people, the days you're practicing in solos, I recommend doing 30 to 60 minutes of the mechanical practice map. There are a lot of things that you can practice in this map, whether it be peak shots, peace control, or crosshair placement. There's lots of things to do. What I recommend is practice your weakest points the most. Pick the ones that you struggle with a ton and practice those more than the other ones. You can switch it around day by day, you know, pick different ones each day that you feel like you need to practice, but just make sure you're hopping in here and working on your mechanics a little bit every single day. It'll help out in the long run. You may not see short-term improvement, but in the long run, 100%. The ones that I've been practicing the most are the peace control tunnels. What I've been doing in this course is working on getting my peace control to be more flicky and fast paced. If you watch Clicks, Mongrel, Benji Fishy, Mr. Savage, all those guys have very, very fast and flicky peace control, but it's also very, very consistent. That's what I'm trying to get my peace control to look like, and I'm using the peace control tunnels to practice that. I've also been practicing the regular peace control courses and the peak shots. In both of those courses, I'm practicing peace control from behind behind cover as much as possible. The way you can tell if you're doing your peace control correctly in this map is like this. If you get hit by the enemies, that means you were not doing it correctly. You want to be doing it from behind right hand peaks to the point where the enemies never have a chance to shoot you. The reason I like the peak shot course in this mechanics map so much is because if you expose yourself to the orb, you will take damage. So that gives you the opportunity to tell if you're peace controlling correctly and if you're taking your peak shots correctly. This is great practice to build discipline in taking the most optimal peaks possible. And I think everybody in the world can use practice in that. So yeah, I spent 30 to 60 minutes in that mechanical practice map and then after that, I hop into 1v1s or zone wars. I would recommend doing this for about an hour, especially if you're struggling in arena fights. I'm telling you, doing 1v1s is what is going to elevate your skill level in solos, in solo tournaments, arena, whatever it is. This is the way to see crazy improvements. Yeah, you need to keep up your mechanical practice with your aim, your peace control, all that stuff, but doing 1v1s practices all that stuff under pressure, in action. Doing 1v1s in creative is going to be the way that you see your mechanical practice from Kovacs and from Raiders maps transfer over to arena. 
If you have higher ping in Arena than you do in Creative, there's two things you can try. One, you can try practicing in Creative on a different server. That way when you hop into Arena on that lower ping, it's going to feel better. The other thing you need to do is just slow down your mechanics when you're playing in Arena. Because if you're trying to button mash edit core somebody on high ping, it's not always going to go so well. So just slow down and play more strategic. So what I recommend doing is either hopping into matchmaking, creative matchmaking to find opponents, keep scouting around in matchmaking until you find somebody around your skill level or better, and then 1v1 them as long as possible. I have 1v1 maps linked down below so you can hop into those via creative matchmaking, or you can hop into scrim discords and find opponents there. Back in the day, that's how I found the most sweaty people possible. It was via scrim discords. Now finally, after doing 1v1s for about an hour, you can hop into either solo arena or solo scrims. Depending on how much time you have in your practice session, you may only be able to hit one or the other, but that's totally fine. Just pick the one that you're really wanting to practice for that day. If there's a solo cash cup coming up the next day, you may want to go with solo scrims, but if you're still trying to get to champs, you're probably going to want to go with solo arena. Here's a few good practice techniques for both of these game modes. For Arena, practice W keying smartly. This means taking smart fights throughout the game. The way you do this is by rotating to the dead side of zone, or the side of zone that's going to have the least amount of players. This will never be the center of the zone. The center of the zone is where almost everybody rotates, especially with tilted towers in the game now. And so it's best to rotate around the edges. And now you may be thinking, Jivan, you're not going to get any kills or any fighting practice by doing this. I'm gonna be honest with you, some of my highest kill games this season have been from W King the Dead Side of Zone. I truly think a part of this is the fights on Dead Side of Zone go a lot smoother because there's less third parties. If you're constantly getting third partied in a fight like you would be at the center of the zone, you're not going to be able to end the fight very fast and therefore you won't be able to take as many fights throughout the game. But if you fight on the dead side of zone, you'll be fighting smarter, you'll be building good rotational habits for W King in a cash cup, and you'll be able to focus more on the 1v1 rather than being scared of third parties throughout a fight. While you're taking these fights in arena, practice getting in the same mentality that you had during your 1v1s in creative. This doesn't mean overbuilding and building to the moon like you would in a build fight in creative, but it means playing confident in your mechanics like you would be in creative. A lot of people have trouble transferring their confidence over to arena. Just take the fight and picture it like you're in creative, taking smart peeks, focusing on your building, focusing on the enemy, and not focusing on arena points or third parties about to show up. Just focus on the fight at hand just like you would in creative. In general, realistic 1v1s and build fights are going to be very similar to mid game fights. Box fights are gonna be more similar to the early game fights you take. And then zone wars will be similar to end game. So try getting into the mentality of those different game modes during different points throughout the game of arena. When you're in early game, picture yourself in box fights and so on and so on. With the routine of Kovacs, mechanical training, 1v1s, and then solo arena, you should be able to get better at fighting, but it's going to take time. Give this a few weeks or even a whole season, and I promise you'll see improvements. Now, what about for scrims? What are some good practice techniques? One, get into cash cup mentality. Pretend like you're actually playing a tournament. If you're playing scrims on a website like rematch.gg, there is money prizes. So it's much easier to get into that cash cup mentality because you're competing for a prize and you're competing on a leaderboard. While you're playing in these scrims, make sure you're trying to learn good mid game loot paths. What this means is figure out where everything is around you and the most efficient way possible to get to it. For example, where are you going to get metal in the mid game nearby your loot path? Is there a metallic bridge? Is there a gas station? You know, figure out where that stuff is so that you know where to go. It should literally feel like a habit. You shouldn't even have to think about it once you get enough practice. But the biggest thing you should be focusing on in scrims is obviously learning the end game. Learning how to take high ground, how to get front side low ground, when to switch layers, all that stuff. And the way you can do this the best is by watching pro players play in cash cups or scrims and taking notes while you watch. If you're ever waiting for the next code in a scrim, either go into 1v1s or something, or you can watch pro players and take notes between games. This will help keep you in that scrim mindset and it'll help you learn while you're not even playing. Now the last part of a solo practice routine is VOD reviewing. I know, boring, but it's super important. Every pro player in the game VOD reviews, or at least has VOD reviewed until they got to the pro level. 
100,000%, it is not capped. So for 30 to 60 minutes at the end of the day, watch back your games or watch pro games. Take notes while you're watching. A lot of people will just sit there and watch and maybe they'll take mental notes, but it leaves their brain the next time you play. So have an organized notebook with like sticky notes and everything, you know, get really official with it. It actually will go a long way. When I'm VOD reviewing my own games, I usually just watch back my stream or my recordings. I always do this for duos because I like to hear my comms and where I went wrong with communication in the end game, especially Especially since I'm IGL. But if you can't record your games or you didn't stream it, you can also watch it in replay mode. If you ever need an extra pair of eyes while VOD reviewing, I recommend going to either scrim discords, community discords, or maybe even a coaching website to hire a coach. Having extra pair of eyes on your gameplay will help you see stuff that maybe you couldn't see on your own. So anyways guys, that's pretty much the whole routine. Take what I said throughout this video and maybe make your own routine. Maybe you only have two hours a day. Toss some of the stuff out the window that you feel like you're already good at and make a schedule that works for you. But what I laid out in this video is going to be the best way to get better at solos. I hope this helped you out. If it did, be sure to hit that like button sub if you're new. Use code JIVINTV and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.